Hello everyone. It's been a while. Welcome to ATK's Artist Class Guide. Artist is one of my main class in my 9 character roster. I enjoy playing her, and I play her at the latest endgame content in Korea at eye level 1620. This guide will cover the artist class in detail, along with general beginner friendly support tips as well. Anyone who is interested in the new class, or anyone who is new to the game who are interested in Lost Ark supporting, this is a great start video for you. Artist is the third support class in Lost Ark, along with Bard and Paladin. Her major pros are versatile identity meter management, focused healing for a single player, long range shield potentials, unique teleportation mechanics with cleanse attached, and strongest burst dagger. Her cons are most fragile out of the three, difficult buff upkeep without proper builds, longer skill animation locks which leads to frequent skill cancels. I would say the difficulty of the class is right in the middle between Bard and Paladin. In terms of consistency, they bring it to the party based on the player's skills. Artist's identity abilities are Moonfall and Sunrise. If you look here, she'll have three bubbles under her brush icon. You can use either one or two of these to activate your identity skills. Using one bubble will cast Sunrise, where it will spawn a Sun Marble at the target location within 10 meters. Any players pressing the G key on this orb will heal a significant amount of HP to them. Up to three marbles can be up in the field, and they will automatically disappear after 60 seconds. On a side note, if you have the class engraving full bloom, upon spawning the sun marble, she can heal additional HP 24 meters around the orb spawn. So it is mandatory to have the class engraving to ensure AoE heals along with targeted heals available for your party. Using two bubbles will cast Moonfall, where she will strike the ground and increase outgoing damage to all party members by 10%. The cool part about Artis is that remaining identity bubbles are stored at all times. Unlike Bard, where she uses all available bubbles for stronger heals and buffs, she will use exact one bubble for heals, exact two bubbles for buffs. So managing your available bubbles and meter levels throughout the fight is crucial for artist's play. Before looking at the artist's major use skills, I want to go over the basic fundamental skill layout for all supports. Support skill sets are categorized in four groups. It is important to understand the system because it will help you create a proper personalized skill set. Understanding this will also give you guys some knowledge how supports are different from each other because they do excel at some of these categories than other supports. First category is marking. This is the most important category out of the four. What marking essentially means you're debuffing the boss to receive additional 10% damage. If you look closely at the tripods for all classes, these icon means they can be marking skills. You must have 100% uptime or have marking applied every time your party deals damage. Because every precious second you don't mark essentially means your DPS players are doing 10% less damage at that time. This snowballs a lot more than you think. You can either have one skill for marking uptime, like Sound Shock for Bard, or two skills to ensure cover ups unless you're missing your marking skills. Second category is attack buffs. All supports have major buff skill, like Bard's Heavenly Tune, Artist's Sun Sketch, and Paladin's Heavenly Blessings. Problem is that buff duration runs out before the cooldown of the skill. Therefore, all supports have filler skills to cover up the missing buff duration. These are Sound Vibration for Bard, Sunwell for Artist, and Wrath of God for Paladins. Other than Paladin, Bard and Artist buff filler skills are stationary AoE platforms. So DPS players are required to stand on top of them to receive the buffs. Artist is the least effective due to the smallest platform size. Paladins excel at this category because both Heavenly Blessings and Wrath of God is targeted buffs so they're the easiest class to keep this attack buff uptime for all DPS players. Third category is shields and defensive supporting. Third and fourth categories were personalities and preferences starting to kick in. Bard has skills like Wind of Music, a short range shield skill that can also bring great meter gains. Artist has long range shielding skill called Sprinkle that also has great stagger. Paladin has targeted shielding skill called Holy Protection that can also cleanse. There are also targeted supporting skills like Lights of Rhapsody for Bard, where you can target a specific area, Starry Night for Artist, where a 6 meter radius around her is protected, and Gosset Law, where it can also be used as a marking skill if wanted. Paladin's downside for this is Gosset Law does not grant push immune to the caster, but Bard and Artists have tripods that can make their skills push immune, which is often used to not get knocked out of the certain raids. Fourth category is Identity Gains and Utility. This is the category where you fill up the rest of the skills bars with. There are meter gain skills and counters as well. Bard's example can be Prelude of Storm for meter, Rhythm Buckshot for counter, and unique skills like Dissonance for debuffing the boss's incoming damage for extra care. Artists have skills like Hopper, Pouncing Tiger, and Inkwell for meter gain. One Stroke, Upper Stroke for counters, 
and Crane Wing for additional stagger. Paladins have Holy Area for additional defense buffs, Light of Judgment for meter gain, Executioner's Sword, and Holy Sword for counters too. With those four categories in mind, let's look over all the artist's skills in order of importance. First category, Marking Skills. Artist has a couple of choices of marking skills. She has Ink Shower, Butterfly Dream, and Drawing Orchids. Ink Shower kind of operates like Sound Shock for Bard. It has the shortest uptime of 6 seconds for marking. This skill can be used very often with two stacks available with the second tripod on the third row. On the first row, first tripod can be used to shield yourself by generating shield ethers for Artist. Second can be used for meter gain and third for faster casting speed. The skill isn't as popular due to yourself being busy half the time trying to apply marking to the boss with not much benefactor in meter gain. Butterfly Dream is another marking skill that lasts 10 seconds. You can essentially use the skill alone to keep your marking up 100% of the time. Some players use the skill to activate Conviction Judgment Rune due to being multi-hits. Having the first tripod on the third roll causes the butterflies to fly towards the boss, which will make it easier to land. But you must have the third tripod on the first roll for this due to long casting time. Second tripod on the third roll has multi-hits that will have the highest chance to activate Conviction Judgment Rune. And since this is a fast animation, you can take any tripods on the first roll. Drawing Orchids is the more popular marking skill because it gives 8% attack speed to any player standing on it. It has 12 seconds of marking time and has the longest cooldown. With sufficient enough swiftness and cooldown gems, this can be used as the only marking skill for 100% uptime. However, make sure to understand missing the skill or being cancelled is a big risk due to its long cooldown. This is why majority of the players have second tripod on the third roll for larger AoE to make sure skill lands for marking uptime then movement speed buff on the first tripod. As for myself, I use the Drawing Orchid skill with the following tripods. The skill itself has large AoE and it's a multi-hit skill. Therefore, the marking actually lasts a little longer than 12 seconds due to it refreshing from additional hits it provides. Based on this chart here, even with average amount of swiftness and decent gems, you can easily keep up 100% uptime on your marking skills. The second tripod on the third roll also helps to land extra hits to the boss because the judgment on the AoE is really large. The biggest advantage is to have the long-lasting marking skill to empty out any other available skill slots for other use. The marking lasting very long is both disadvantageous and advantageous, because for advantage, you don't have to worry about it for a very long time, but if you happen to miss or get cancelled by getting hit, you definitely lose a lot of damage potential for a very long time. It is crucial to rotate the skill every cooldown to make sure the boss receives 10% additional damage throughout the whole fight. Second category, Attack Buff Skills. Artist has a main attack buff and a filler attack buff. Main attack buff Sunsketch operates just like Heavenly Tune and Heavenly Blessings. Just casting the skill will provide various buffs to party mates in 24 meter radius. The first tripod preferences is based on whether you want Paralysis Immune, faster casting, or gain additional meter landing the skill. The speed of the cast is actually not that significantly different, so I tend to use the third meter gain tripod. But for newer artists, I definitely do recommend use the Paralysis Immune to prevent yourself to get your skill cancelled during the raid. As I mentioned on the quick review video, the cooldown of the skill is very long, so getting this cancelled is a big risk. As for the second tripod, you have a choice between giving attack speed or defense. Generally, people use attack speed tripod if majority of the DPS in your party is spec class or slow classes. If you have a lot of swiftness or fast classes, you can take the defensive tripod. Generally, I use the defensive tripod due to her lacking some defensive skills like Guardian Tune for Bard. Filler attack buff is a Sunwell skill. The first tripod is a cooldown tripod. It is very important for you to get the skill up before the buff runs out. As for the second row of tripods, you have choice between mana recovery and shield. Artist's mana recovery is actually really great due to the recovery being instant than regeneration like other support classes. Unless the raid requires severe shielding, most users take mana recovery. Talking more about buff upkeep, the rotation is the same. You have to rotate Sun Sketch every cooldown, except times when it's useless like cutscenes or damage reduction phases. Even with the highest swiftness with level 10 gems, the skill's cooldown is still a little over 13 seconds. Therefore, you will have minimum 6 seconds of empty time frame to keep the attack buff up. Sunwell needs to be utilized to keep this buff up by placing it properly where the DPS players are. Here's a good example of the latest dungeon run I did. I placed Sunwell to my friend Zeos to continue pumping damage to the boss with proper buffs applied. You have to place the Sunwell at the back of the boss because two of the DPS players in this party were back attack classes. Since Sun Sketch lasts about 8 seconds and Sunwell lasting about 6 seconds total, 
As long as Sun Sketch's cooldown is 14 seconds, you can have 100% uptime. Here are the combination of swiftness and gems to make this possible. Since getting Sunwell's cooldown any faster than recommended gives no beneficial factor to attack buff uptime, priority of the cooldown gem on Sunwell is actually not that important. Additionally, you do not need to be stressed out for 100% uptime because not every DPS player step on the Sunwell skill. Therefore, instead of being forced on 100% uptime, try activating the Sun Sketch skill when you know for sure DPS members are doing the best damage to the boss. This is often during when bosses are staggered or during a safe long pattern. Lastly, I want to mention that this topic is the reason why Paladins excel at this category. Because Paladins both attack buffs are targeted and able to achieve 100% uptime with proper builds. Third category, Shielding Skills. Artist has few great shield skills that can also be applied in long range. She has Hopper, Sprinkle, and Starry Knight as an optional saving skill. Hopper is one of the major skills most artist players take. She jumps three times to apply shield and also generate massive meter. Hopper generates most meter if you add the first tripod on the first row. Second tripod gives additional defense for more aggressive shielding. And third tripod does not affect shield range so you can actually ignore this. My highest wealth rune is applied here with first tripod for shielding and massive meter gains. Sprinkle is an additional shield skill that can be used at very far range. First tripod on the first layer can be used to provide shields for you. It is recommended for beginner artists who are afraid of getting hit. Second can be utilized if you are low on mana. Third tripod is the one I use to provide more range to shielding. As for the second line tripods, most people use the first one to make the sprinkle in a long line, reaching almost off the screen. However, some people use the third tripod to apply it in a more cone shape instead. But I would suggest using the first one and angle it to reach as many players as you can. As for runes, overrun runes are most often placed here for higher stagger. I also often swap sprinkle skill with the better meter gain skill if the raid is a reclear or overleveled run because hopper and sun sketch can provide enough defensive support to players who does not get hit as much. But such as tri parties or higher level content, sprinkle is a very good skill for you to take. As for starry knight, think of this as a stationary rhapsody of light that can provide defensive support to your teams around you. As for tripods, first roll needs to be the first one due to yourself not having defensive help while using this skill. As for second row, most people take push immunity, but cooldown is also an option because you're paralysis immune as default. As for the third row, second tripod is a trap tripod that will not give you any supporting, but it looks cool and it can be utilized in chaos dungeons. As for an additional comment on general shielding and support care, it is important to position yourself so that you can reach as many people in a straight line for sprinkle. As for hopper, it is important to reach both the boss and your teammates to provide shielding and meter gain. As for starry light, it is good to use more often than not because it also gains a little bit of meter. If I happen to take Starry Knight to the raid that has a lot of AoE and incoming damage, I rotate the skill a lot more, often comboing with Hopper. Great players use the skill very often to let your teammates push DPS even at tough patterns. The last fourth category is Identity Gains and Utility. After picking one or two skills from the previous categories, You'll fill rest of your skill bar with the best meter gain skills along with some more utility skills like counters, stagger, and destruction. For major meter gain purposes, we have Inkwell, Pouncing Tiger, and Door of Illusion. Inkwell is a great meter gain skill with second tripod at first row, third AoE tripod at second row, and first tripod at the third row. The cooldown tripod at the second row is a great chaos dungeon skill. The cooldown of the skill drops based on how many hits you land with the skill. As for the two tripods in the third row, as shown here, the meter gain is slightly better on the second tripod, but it requires the boss to be stationary due to the skill being a setup. Since first tripod is more realistic to land, for consistency, most people take the first tripod. Pouncing Tiger is also a great meter gain skill that also has high stagger with providing one point of destruction. With cooldown tripod and stagger increased tripod at the second, you actually do not need to level the skill to 10 because both the tripods do not give any benefits than a slight damage increase. The multiple tigers of the first tripod in the third row divides the amount of total staggers as well. Since it only increases mana uses for the small gains, most people leave the skill at level 7 for the supporting benefits. Door of Illusion is a unique skill just for artists. She can create a portal that can be accessible to party members. If party members press G, they will be able to teleport where artist is. As for tripods, you have choice to use mana reduction with Gailin Rune, or fast cast with focus rune, or tenacity for safe casting with paralysis immune. As for second line tripod, most artists take cleanse, 
The door can cleanse party members from far away. It's a great skill to save your party mates in bad situations, since they can also take the portal to teleport to you after cleansing stunts. As for the third line tripod, the first one provides tenacity to the teleported member for 3 seconds. But the second tripod makes the skill stackable, it's too good to ignore. Door of Illusion meter increase is flat, which means it does not scale with wealth rune or spec. This skill is often used to quickly gain meter to enable fast buffing or heals. Some raids do not require this skill, but you can definitely make cool and fun plays in a raid as shown as the example plays here. For counters, we have two choices, one stroke and upper stroke. Upper stroke is more mainstream one. You keep this skill at level 7 because level 10 tripod does not provide much other than damage. It has meter gain tripods and have tenacity tripod for push immune. Both of these attack animations are counted as a counter as well. One stroke is a counter that operates a little similar to holy sword from paladin. The third tripod from the second row makes it a charge skill. So tapping the skill will activate the counter faster. This skill has a natural paralysis immune and with second tripod on the third row, it also leaves a residue that provides additional meter. These two counters are a complete preference. I have tried both and went back and forth, and I'm currently using the upper stroke because I'm used to the animation. Think of one having tenacity with a shorter range, and one having a longer range with a little bit more meter gain. We also have noticeable skills like Crane Wing and Ink Rise. Crane Wing is an additional stagger skill. If the raid requires severe stagger mechanics, this is also an optional skill you can take along with other stagger skills. You can leave the skill at level 4 for a stagger benefits. Tripods at level 7 and 10 does not benefit the overall stagger, so it is a great small skill point investment to bring additional stagger to the team. The skill is an also major chaos dungeon skill, due to the cooldown tripod on the second row also helps cooldown reduction per hit. Ink Rise is a very specific utility skill. The first tripod on the third row pulls nearby monsters to the middle. In Broshaz a Hard Gate 2, the head's third mechanic spawns multiple black orbs, then one black orb. It is the targeted player's job to destroy all the black orbs that have spawned by gathering them up with an auto attack or specific skills. Instead of auto attacking it, you can use this skill once to gather all the orbs in one place very quickly. The bard's equivalent skill is sound vibration. There's another tripod that gathers everything up in one place as well. The skill isn't used anywhere else, but it is a good idea to keep in mind just in case we get similar mechanics in the future. Now that we went over all the skills, let's go over step by step how an artist should build their skill set and how they utilize them in a raid battle. Let's go over mine for an example. First of all, we have our marking skill drawing orchids. Practice rotating the skill to the Triction dummy at every cooldown. Second, we have our two buffs, Sun Sketch and Sun Well. Practice casting Sun Sketch, then Sun Well after when you have about 0.9 to 0.5 seconds left from the buff running out. After a successful buff filler, rotate Sun Sketch again. Rotate these two while you're rotating the marking skill as well. Third, add Hopper as the fourth mandatory skill. The skill is too good to be replaced. Try rotating Hopper in between the rotations mentioned above to gain meter and simulate providing shield support. Afterwards for 4th, now you can add any skills you desire. Here I added Sprinkle, Door of Illusion, Upward Stroke, and Pouncing Tiger. I can replace Sprinkle with Inkwell for additional meter gains for easier raids. Try mixing all the skills while doing the main rotations mentioned in the 1st and 2nd category. Unless you're in an emergency situation, your awakening timing should be done after casting Sun Sketch and Draw Orchid because the cast time is very long. Also, if you happen to have conviction and judgment, watch out on the cooldowns because it may adjust the rotations a little bit. I still often make mistakes of using both of the attack buffs at the same time when you're too focused in the raid. Now it's time to talk about the artist's builds. Artist is a full swiftness class. The spec scaling is really bad and she relies on low cooldown to have good potential in rotations and shielding. Therefore, you need all swiftness and accessories with spec swift and necklace. You can go back to the skill side to see some swiftness recommendation charts for the 100% uptime rotations. As for engravings, these are very simple as well. For people who are planning to create artists with the Hyper Express or Engraving Assistant, the 4 level 3 engraving of choice is Class, Awakening, Expert, and Heavy Armor. Unlike DPS classes, supports do not have many engraving choices. You have mandatory engravings such as Class Engraving, Awakening, and Expert. Heavy Armor is a highly recommended engraving from me due to artists being more fragile than other two classes. She also has only Sun Sketch and Hopper as self-defense measure. Now for the additional engravings. You have choices between Drops of Aether and Vital Point. 
For those of you who are wondering, I do not recommend Magic Stream or Max MP because Artist's mana recovery is phenomenal with Sunwell. And Magic Stream is not a good engraving overall because the engraving actually does nothing if you get hit too much. And Artist requires you to be close to the boss with Hopper and close combat defensive care with Starry Knight as well. So a solid 5 engravings would be Class, Awakening, Expert, Heavy Armor, Vital Point, or Drops of Ether. As for Drops of Ether and Vital Point, myself have both options by switching one accessory. This is the best option, but if you had to just choose one, I believe Drops may be a little bit better choice here due to Artist's Stagger is already being great and sufficient enough with Overwhelm runes and skills like Pouncing Tiger and Sprinkle. Either way, it is completely preference on these two engravings. There is also one more build though, which require Ancient Accessories. At Broshaza Hard, you'll be able to access Ancient Accessories, which it gives 6-3 engravings total, so you'll be able to achieve 5 threes in a 1. Using this knowledge, there is another popular build that is 4 threes and 2 twos. Class, Engraving, Expert, Drops or Vital Point, and 2 Spirit Absorption and 2 Heavy Armor. The theory of 2 Spirit Absorption comes from these thoughts. The Yearning set does not provide attack speed to the caster, it only increases your movement speed. Since artists tend to have many skills that have long animations, we add Spirit Absorption to fill up the 8% more attack speed to 139% attack speed at default. As comparison shown here, this 8% more attack speed might not be a big difference, but it is built to have more speedy play to squeeze in more skills within rotation time. The question is would you spend hundreds of thousands of gold to get this build? I personally recommend prioritize getting high quality accessories for high swiftness for better buff uptime even if it ends you up getting even 4 threes. Either way, the choice is completely up to you. With that, this concludes my detailed guide of the artist class. This is one of my main class, so I had a lot of fun making this video. If you have any additional questions that are not mentioned in the video, feel free to visit my live stream and ask away when I'm playing the artist class. As Lost Ark is getting Brow Shots of Heart soon, good support players will be very important. Not the builds, but players who have proper rotations and great uptime and buffs. Good luck everyone, and as always, thank you for watching. Bye bye!